When I mention to my friends that uh, I go skiing and I stay with my grandparents in the Val there, um, at first they're a bit shocked really that they ski so on because I think everybody else's grandparents, you know, don't do a lot. And um, I think they quite think it's quite amazing, especially. And then when I tell them they don't just ski piece, they ski off piece as well. They're even more impressed by it. It's the ones that do ski. So it's not there bad. you are, Jack. You're on it too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I started skiing when I was 46, which is 26 years ago. And uh, I started skiing because my wife told me I had to. And why was that? Because I'd had DVT following an illness and uh, we were watching uh, Ski Sunday one evening and she said, hadn't we better try this before we get too old? So I said, yes. And we went a couple of weeks later. We were put with a Canadian called Wayne Watson, who essentially taught us to ski. And we are still skiing with Wayne Watson 20 odd years later. Margaret, what are your thoughts about skiing off piste? Well, to begin with, I thought it looked impossible. But if you want to do something, then you learn and you do it. But the technique just takes so long and even after all this time and many, many, many days of skiing we are still learning. And I know I don't just speak for myself. John's pretty good but I think he'd agree he's still learning. <laughs> well we have the example in front of us in Wayne, our guide. Um, every time we ski with him, every day almost, that uh, we ain't there yet. <laughs> Do you do anything to keep sort of fit for your sports? Well, I have never really done anything specifically to keep fit because life just seems so busy anyway and I'm on my feet most of the day. But I do do a lot of gardening and we currently have a garden which is on a slope, quite a steep slope, so there's a lot of up and down work involved. Especially when you forget a gardening fork and you have to take five minutes or even longer to go and get it. But I did take up yoga probably about 10 years ago, so I try to keep that up. And do you find that that helps with uh, your fitness? The yoga definitely that? helps, yes. Most of my fitness, or lack of it, comes from skiing. Though I do have a, a, a small exercise routine, uh, and I do walk. Yeah. Um, How often do you do your exercise routine? If I'm telling the truth, not as often as I should. If I'm telling lies every day. <laughs> as far as fitness and health is concerned, I'm an asthmatic. And have been since I was a child. And um, that always has to be overcome. But it can be overcome. And a surprising number of athletes are asthmatics. Um, most people, when you talk to them have something wrong. You know, there is some defect somewhere in our makeup and most people get past it. Yes, when, when we took up skiing, um, it was soon afterwards that we came across the situation where people were hurting their knees particularly and such like things. And cartilage was a big problem. And I decided that uh, we could either wear away or rust away and I think before we took up skiing we were in danger of rusting away, or I was anyway. How long do you think you're going to kind of carry on with the, with the skiing and all that kind of thing? I carry on till something gives out. Um, it's kind of worried about age or thought about age when I was about 65 or something like that and thought um, you know, you're getting old, maybe it's getting time to wind down and stop doing these things. And then you think, why? And then you get to 70 and things really do start to happen about then. You start to get loose strength quite badly in one thing and another. Um, but there are good examples here, like Jacques Jurenville, who now I think must be 84, who still skis every day. And... Um, as long as he's skiing, I'm keeping skiing. He's nearly 10 years older than me and he's still going.